Hey everyone, welcome to part three of the RC car lighting review. This is Ampro Engineering, and for part three, I think this is going to be the most anticipated because I've received a, a ton of emails since yesterday, which, which was when I released episode 30 covering the GT Power Light set, talk, uh, asking me to review the Tamiya one. So that's what we're going to do today. There is a fourth one on its way. It's going to be here in a couple of weeks. So when the fourth one uh, arrives, we'll go ahead and investigate that. So for the time being, let's move these here. Where should I, where should I put them? Ah, ah, yes. Hang on. Let's see where we should put these. There we go. There we go. All right. On to the Tamiya one. Now, I'm already annoyed. Why am I annoyed? Well, I, I built this lovely little electronic testing bed here that I can use for the for the lighting. And as you can see, it's, it's just an, uh, to me, uh, I'm sorry, Futaba receiver, two channel. Well, wouldn't you know it, we have channel one here, we have channel two here, and what is this, what? Why is there a channel three? I haven't a clue why this is, uh, a three channel, I don't even know if it requires a three channel radio. So we're gonna try it with channel one and channel two. And because of that, uh, all this just goes out the door. Thank you so much. And uh, we are going to pull in my TA02RS to uh, use its receiver. Because uh, unfortunately I'm all out of 2.4 gigahertz receivers right now. So I have to you know borrow that cars. First things first, let's investigate the manufacturing that went into this. And, and the reason why why I'm saying that is we do see a Tamiya badge here, a Tamiya logo right there. So, you know, typically this tells me it's a higher quality product. I'm hesitant to believe that this is a Tamiya. Number one, it came in a sealed package that said Tamiya. Unfortunately, the text was, wasn't really printed well, and it's not very easy to see here. It's a little more visible on the back. I mean, actually, it looks really good on the screen here. Uh, in person, this isn't really black. It's, it's a, it's kind of a dark purple and it's pretty darn blurry uh, when this thing was screen printed or I don't know if this is regular I don't know how this was printed inkjet or whatever um, it's not lined up well at all All the colors are off I've never seen a Tamiya product like that secondly um, it's this is I've had this for a couple of weeks and it's been sitting in the bag and it's all peely why why is it peely but my favorite part is this you see that so, I mean, the PCB is, I don't know if they use double-sided tape to hold it in place, but it's already falling out. I've never used it and it's falling out. Uh, here's the serial number, uh, serial number, the part number on this. I really don't believe this is Tamiya. In fact, I, I can't even give you a part number because the auction didn't have a part number. If anybody knows a little more about this, please tell me, but I'm convinced that this is not really a Tamiya unit. I don't think it's vintage. I just bought it uh, two or three weeks ago. This was, no, I'm sorry, about, about a month ago. It came a couple of weeks ago. This was $15, I think. All right, enough complaining. Let's uh, put some power to it and see if I hate it. Now, much like the GT power unit, um, all of the receiver male plugs and female plugs go back into the original enclosure, which again, this is kind of tidy because they all go back to one spot, but you do lose some length. So let's begin, let's find channel one. God, there's so many of them, right? Channel one and channel one here. I'm gonna fast forward through this. I think you all know how to plug, oh wow. Already have stuff on. Ugh, blue. Why are there blue ones? All right, let's keep going. Isn't fast forward wonderful? Everything's plugged in now, and let's, I mean, it looks like pretty much everything is on here. If I turn left or right, okay, that's working nicely. These LEDs are very nice. They're very, very orange. 
Uh, the others are typically quite yellow, but these are, uh, actually even on screen they look pretty orange. These are quite nice. Oh, this is interesting too. They are, oh, it's very interesting. Okay, so they are bonded together. This is just one spool of a, uh, of a wire loom that already had four wires attached to each other and they simply split it off up here and put in the two LEDs and at the bottom it's split off again and they are plugged in side by side right here. You can see that. So that's very interesting. You would have to peel these apart to get them to do the... Wait, hang on a second. Oh, what? Oh, that's very nice. So you have to pry them apart for the, the left and the right side of the front of the car. So that's kind of neat. And the wire looks quite long. That's also a bonus. Um, I did unplug the yellow wire from the, the motor so I can see now what accelerating and stopping do. Uh, you don't see all of the wires. There's these two five millimeters and these, oh wow, so there's, there's a total of eight five millimeter LEDs. These are white, these are blue, and I suspect you can simply change these out for some white ones as well. Uh, let's see what accelerating does. Please don't flash. Okay, so we these stay on very good. I'm happier than I thought I was going to be. These stay on very nice. These come on. I, I, I guess I guess I'm still trying to figure out a practical use for that. I suspect if you want to put them in as a fog light or, or a, a auxiliary light, that's fine. These come on at neutral. And I suspect we hit the brakes. Okay, so we're gonna have a neutral, a brake light, or a, I guess a neutral light, and then a, a brake light. More, what I'm thinking is, these you would wire in as red for a quote unquote brake light, because I guess when the vehicle is stopped in real life, you'd have your foot on the brake, so your your brake would be on. Uh, on the RC car, if you were to slam on the brakes uh, or go backwards, then I guess you could use these here as a reverse light. Um, I, I wanna know what channel three does, so let's go ahead and plug in channel three. Channel three. Channel three there. Oh, what just happened? Channel three is going in. Huh. Well, this is interesting. So using the third channel, I'm able to, I'm able to turn on and off the headlights. Accelerating still turns those on, shuts off the brake lights. Reverse still works, whether or not they're on or off, turn signals, same thing. Hmm. I have to admit, I am a little bit impressed. I thought I was gonna be agitated, but you know, uh, the, the, the whole brake reverse light thing is a little odd. To me, the best one is still going to be this unit here for the combination brake and driving light, because again, there is that differential between a dull driving light and a bright brake light. This one here is still, even though it has no operational forward lights, at least the brake uh, does work accurately. This one here though, it does have this feature where you can turn these on or off. And that I have to admit is kind of cool. Well, I hate to say it, but I don't hate this. Uh, what I what I'm not a fan of. This is this is hilarious. Notice here how it shows the the different sockets. Now I guess it's telling me that D10 is a is a, a reverse light and D11 is a brake light and D12 is a turn signal. But what's very amusing is how it it has them set up over here. I mean you'd think that much like where's my trash can? There you are. You think that like this one here, it, this one at least has the orientation of the plugs the same as the diagram, which is very confusing. I don't know why they did that. Maybe, maybe this means this. No, because remember these two are left and right. Ah, that's weird. Oh well. 
because uh, this actually did come all wired up. So all these wires were already in here. That'll make life a little bit easier since you don't have to actually plug them all in. I'm not, I don't know why it comes blue, but oh, oh well, I guess the whole drift scene is going to like a lot of flashing, a lot of blue. That's one, uh, one sector of the hobby. I still have to get into as of this moment, I, I think I've been able to make a decision here, you know, of, of these three units, and this is going to change this one here. I've, I've owned the longest and to this day I have no use for it. I mean, it, it's just the turn signals work well, and maybe I'll find an application for just that. But in the meantime, I don't like this at all. I very much do not recommend that you buy this. This thing is not worth anything. Uh, second place, and I have to say a pretty close second is going to be this because it does have an operational set of headlights that does flick on and off with the third channel, which I think is a bit novel, but I can see a lot of a lot of use to that. So this is very interesting. I'm quite surprised by that. But again, the build quality, this thing is just, it, there's no way it's a Tamiya. If anybody at Tamiya knows for sure wonderful let me know if uh somebody out there knows a little more about this than i do please post away for me despite the fact this has no usable forward facing lights the whole brake and uh driving light for the tail light combination is what sells it for me this is the most realistic of the bunch again as you can tell by this one here this is the one that's missing that port the uh, build quality, I think, of all three is quite miserable. But again, you're spending between twelve and twenty dollars. The only closest uh, option is going to be the uh, the the two sets of Tamiya front and rear. I, I don't know how they work, but it's it's a uh, Tamiya it's like a TL TLU O one and O two. Uh, but those are around fifty or sixty dollars each. However, they will wire the entire car, and one day I have to I have to pick up one of those. But for a lot of these vehicles, I don't really need that that much overkill. And then there's the one that comes with like the uh, the big rig or the MF MFU, I think it is, that has the vibration kit. I've got that in my my high lift. I think for this one here, you know, you pick this one up here, you wire in a couple of headlights for LEDs. You're going to have a very realistic setup. However, both of these did have usable brake and reverse lights and if you can pick up one of these cheap then that might do the trick for you i mean honestly if you just want to make the car stand out so it's you know that much less likely to get hit hey why not you know this is not too too bad for that application you want realistic this is going to be your guy until like i said we get that fourth one which should be in in a, in a few weeks so until then this is the guy to get I hope we came to a conclusion here. I'm surprised again about this Tamiya one. Not horrible, not what I would have expected from Tamiya. And again, I do not believe that that's a Tamiya unit. I think it says Tamiya, but I don't think it really is. Thank you again. Uh, we will probably have the next video coming up soon. It's going to be the complete wiring set up for the Willys Wheeler. And I think you can imagine already which unit I used on that one. So that'll be coming up. It's going to be a long video. And after that, we've got some more suspension and driveline upgrades. Thank you again. We'll see you next time. Please add me on uh, Facebook as well as Instagram and Pro Engineering. Please like this video if you liked it. And uh, please also subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Check out Blue Pinto. They're the band that provides all the audio for my videos. Their uh, website is at the end of this video. We will see you next time.